Okay, so I want to look at how to find derivative of any inverse function. So what do we know about an inverse? We know that f of f inverse equals x, right? That's the definition of an inverse, okay? So if I want to take, the, now I can take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of f of f inverse of x with respect to x equals the derivative of x with respect to x. Now, how do we do the left side? Well, that's the derivative, that's f prime of f inverse of x times the derivative of what's inside using the chain rule, right? Which is the derivative of f inverse. Oops, f inverse of x. Which is what we're looking for, right? And that equals dx with respect to dx, which is just equal to 1. So if we divide out this term from both sides, we'll get a general formula for the derivative of any inverse function. So we have derivative of f inverse of x with respect to x equals 1 over f prime of f inverse. Okay? All right? So this is the general formula. It's not hard. We'll use some we'll do some examples. We'll do a, a number of examples. We'll see how far we get. So the first example is this. If f of x is x squared, what is f inverse? f inverse is x to the 1 half. Right? That's the inverse function of the square function, is the square root function. Well, what is f, f prime? f prime of x equals 2x. But now we want to take the composition f prime of f inverse. Well, f prime of f inverse is f prime, or 2 times f inverse, which is x to the 1 half. Now, here's our derivative. Derivative of x to the 1 half with respect to x equals 1 over this. So it's 1 over 2x to the 1 half, which verifies, which is verified by the power rule, or any other way we have of taking the derivative of x to the one x to the one half, right? So it works in this case. Something that we're familiar with, but it does work. Let's try another example. F of x equals e to the x. Okay. What is the inverse function? It's ln x, right? That's what undoes e to the x. What is f prime? f prime of x is just e to the x. And now we have f prime of ln x, and that is e to the ln x, which is just equal to x. So the derivative of ln x equals 1 over x, which we already know, right? Okay, so this is another way to get at the derivative of, uh, of ln x, right? That's how we get 1 over, that's another way that how we get 1 over x. Okay, let's try some more difficult examples. What if f of x is sine x? Well, f inverse of x is arc sine x. 
f prime of x equals cosine of x. And the composition f prime of f inverse is cosine of arc sine of x. Now, you may remember this from last year. What we did is we found the inside first using an expression for the inside using a right triangle. So this is the angle. Let's call it theta of the uh this is the angle that has a sine of x over one or x so what is the cosine of that well we have to find the third side and that's just square root of one minus x squared by the pythagorean theorem so the derivative of arc sine of x with respect to x equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay? It's kind of neat, right? That's an easy way to find it. Let's try another one. How about cosine x? Question? Sure. Okay. I took the cosine. That's this over 1, right? That's this over 1. Same angle, right? No, this is just the composition. F prime of F inverse, which, is, which I'm finding is a separate entity and then putting 1 over that. So that is cosine of arc sine. That's the composition. Okay. So let's try this one. So F inverse is arc sine, arc cosine of X. F prime of X equals negative sine of x. So let me write this step out. This is one step before the derivative, and that is the f prime of f inverse of x equals negative sine of arc cosine of x. Let's use our triangle method. We'll do the inside part first, find an expression for that. So here's our right triangle. Here's our theta. And now we have an angle whose cosine is x. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse, which says that this side is 1 minus x squared. So the, der the derivative of our cosine of x with respect to x equals 1 over negative square root of 1 minus x squared. And we normally write that as negative 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Why is it negative? Because we have a negative there. The whole thing is negative. Here is our negative sign, right? Let's look at one more. Can I move on? Let's look at the tangent, OK? So the inverse of tangent is arctangent of x. What is the derivative of tangent? That's just secant squared of x. So the composition f prime 
of f inverse of x is secant squared of arctan of x. Well, before we square this, we have to find out what's inside. So let's do our right triangle again. Here's theta. This is tangent, so it's opposite over adjacent. This side is the hypotenuse, so that's 1 plus x squared. And the uh, derivative of arctan of x with respect to x equals 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared squared, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay. Any questions?